Hey, I'm Dylan Sider with Kinfo Carpentry, and today we're going to be talking about paint. Um, I'm going to be talking about some of the different products I use, some of the different paint I like to use, brushes, rollers, things like that. So stick around and uh, hopefully you learn something. of like fibers in it that would all be in your paint if you didn't do that one of the things i picked up for this project is an 18 inch roller uh, with an 18 inch roller pan and i'm hoping this makes life a lot easier when rolling big areas there's a lot of space in this basement that doesn't have windows or doors that this i think will come in handy i also picked up this small paint pole uh, the ceilings are short and I can basically reach them by hand and I just wanted a nice little pole that I could use instead of some long thing. Um, this is the paint pole I used to use. I mean, this is really nice too when you're rolling out big walls, but when the ceilings are short, this can just become kind of cumbersome. Okay, the entire basement is primed. It took me about half a day yesterday to edge it all in with a brush, and then um, it, it's two o'clock now, so it took me about six hours to prime the entire thing. Looks good. So, uh, the next step is to sand all the ceilings. What I'm using is uh, one of these round sanders and I'm gonna sand all the ceilings out. I'm gonna put one coat on the ceilings. Uh, it says I can recoat it in four hours. Uh, I started this ceiling six hours ago, so um, I'm gonna roll this whole ceiling out. And then when the ceilings are done being painted, we can uh, install lights so that it doesn't look like this down here while I'm doing some trim. But I wanted to get everything primed and the ceiling paint all done so that I'm not painting on top of trim. And uh, ceilings are annoying to paint just in general because it puts flecks of white paint all over everything. So if those can get done and out of the way, uh, then, we're, then we're ahead of the game. So that's where I'm at. Here's what I use to sand the walls and the ceilings in between coats called full circle. Um, it's really nice. I find like just a regular pole sander, you know, when you're sanding, it like catches an edge and then you leave a big line in the ceiling. This is hard to do that because it just kind of pivots all the way around and uh, yeah, it, you can't really catch an edge with it, which makes it a lot nicer to use. Here's another must for painting. It is the 12 volt Milwaukee detail sander. It is awesome. Instead of hand sanding all the wood filler off of all my nail holes, um, this saves me so much time because it's, it's fairly gentle, not super aggressive, and I can get into really small areas in these corners. Um, so I like using this. 
instead of hand sanding. <laughs> Here's another tip for you. This is my favorite caulking, Big Stretch. It is a Sashco product, great. Uh, I use it for all painting applications. It, uh, you know, it's really good for not cracking. And I think it stretches up to like 500% or something crazy. So that's what I use uh, for all my painting. And I also love this caulking gun. It is my favorite, uh, dripless um, ETS 2000. So look it up. Here's a better look at how I use my Pelican pail. Um, I like this handle. I think I got it at Home Depot. It's kind of the perfect length. And I hook it on the edge here while I'm not using it. And what I do is I fill my paint so that my roller is just kissing the edge of my paint that I filled in there. I don't want to fill it way up to here so that my roller is buried in the paint and I'm getting it everywhere. And then I just do a little dip. Just apply the paint like that and then I start painting. And then when I don't want to use it, I just go here and uh, it's very convenient and there's also a magnet on this side that holds the brush um, Out of my paint as well. So uh, you can kind of double dip use both at the same time That's why I love this pail and uh, I like using these little plastic inserts um, So that I can use them and actually I just pe I keep peeling the paint out of them and use them over and over again All right, everything is cocked and now we're gonna get to paint this is the paint I like to use for trim. I know it is bare, which is Home Depot, kind of pitched a little towards like a homeowner, but I actually like this paint better than any paint I've ever used. Any Sherwin-Williams product, any Benjamin Moore product, PPG, this is the one I'd choose, which it does seem a little crazy to me, but I really do love this paint. It's great. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I paint a door quick. Um, I lay it out on sawhorses and I use a quarter inch nap roller on a whiz and I just brush the crevices and roll it out and it does not take long. Um, I do own a sprayer but I just think it's too clumsy and time consuming to spray doors so this is how I do it. this door is painted. My goal for it is to just get a nice even coat, um, not put it heavy on some spots and light on other spots. And I also paint the door like a traditional door is built. I paint this line all the way down, that in between, my basically where I transition my roller directionally. I make sure that it actually follows the lines of the door. So I'm not like painting across the style like this or, you know, across the panel like this. I always go long ways, um, just because I think it looks the best. All right, here's the key to the second coat. Take a sanding block, preferably one that you've used quite a bit. You don't want something super aggressive where it's actually taking the paint off, but you're just gonna feel little ridges from the first coat, little, you know, flecks of stuff in it, and you just wanna take all that off. Take a crappy brush and... All right, here is a door that is finished. You can see that it is very consistent. You know, there's no like transitions and lines and things. It looks really good. Like if someone told me that they sprayed this, I would be like, yeah, it's pretty good, you know? Um, this is a great way to get a good, even, consistent finish on the door. Uh, obviously it has a slight orange peel to it because you are using a roller, but I think the alternative is brushing it. And I think, um, you know, this gives you a very good product for uh, the amount of time you spend on it. 
So a painter taught me that the quicker you can get your brush off of the paint, the better. And it'll dry and you'll hardly even be able to see the brush strokes. I also put just a little bit of water in my paint that gives you uh, a little more time for it to, to work with so that you're not dry brushing. Pretty hard to tell with this, but you saw me brush this on here. I didn't touch it for very long. I only probably ran over it with a brush like two times and it just smooths right out because you're not brushing it when it's trying to dry. Here is my favorite brush. A little while back, I did a big painting job and I bought a couple of these and they are my favorite by far. I find them very easy to edge in with. Um, you have great control with it. It doesn't hold a ton of paint. I find you do have to dip it quite a bit, but this is my favorite brush to use. Uh, the handle is really comfortable. Yeah, definitely recommend here. I was on a job a month or two ago and there was a older guy there who's about 70 years old painting the house and he was using something I had never seen before. Look at this, a round brush. I asked him where he got it and so I went and picked one up because he said this is all he uses and uh, I wanted to give it a shot. They're actually relatively cheap, only like 10 bucks and it's an American made brush. I'm sure it's probably really good quality. Um, so. I'm gonna use it for the first time here and uh, tell you what I think of it. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen somebody use one of these. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, it's interesting, it's like, it's definitely a lot different feel than like a traditional paintbrush. Uh, the old guy kind of claimed that it held more paint, um, which maybe it does. I don't mind edging in with it. I don't usually edge in with a square brush. Like I usually like a one that has a kind of a taper to it, but it seems to be all right. I'll have to try it on the walls. All right, here's a little paint tip. See how you have end grain there that won't hold paint. Take a little bit of glue on the tip of your finger and apply that. And that'll seal up the end grain so that it'll be paintable. All right, I basically have one more coat to do on all the trim and then I'm gonna be painting the walls. Hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks and uh, feel free to drop a comment if there's anything that uh, you could teach me. And follow along to see this basement get wrapped up. I'll see you next week. Hey dude, hey Milo. All right, see you later.